I, okay, so I wasn't sure if I actually titled this live stream, but I wrote a film for Johannes Bakunke, and I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I respect the actor very much, and I should know by now how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Strange, because I've seen quite a few interviews with him, and yeah, I'm not sure they said his name out loud. Anyway, um, I don't expect him to watch this, obviously, but uh, either way, I think I should explain myself. I came up with the concept for this film back in April, actually, of last year. So it's been a full year since I, since the idea was birthed. I don't know why I was running away from that word, but yeah, the, the idea, I gave birth to the idea exactly a year ago, I think, and, and I've been writing it ever since, and pr I've practically finished it, I keep adding scenes, I just had this amazing rush of inspiration and love. And reflection that I just needed to get down on paper and I did and I'm, I'm very proud actually uh, and I know this may come across as uh, delusional perhaps but uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm confident that I will make this film this feature film uh, it might be a bit foolish to have such confidence especially when uh, not just considering the landscape of, you know, the industry, but also uh, I'm betting all my cards <laughs> on that actor, on Johannes Bakunke. I, I wrote it for him and I've been writing it for a year now. And, uh, and for all that time, I just don't see anyone else taking that role. It's written specifically for him. I feel like I have a very particular connection, which is strange because I've only seen one film with him. But he was that impressive in that one film, and it's of course force majeure. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry to not be original. I do want to really, with all my heart, I want to check out the rest. Well, check out is maybe an appropriate word. Um, I want to watch and experience and appreciate the rest of his filmography, even if the films may not be as great as Force Majeure, or maybe greater, I don't know. Um, either way, they're all going to be valuable and worth the time, purely based on the fact that he's in them, because he is that special of an actor, I believe. I mean, he inspired this whole, partly he inspired this whole idea, this whole script to just come to fruition. and. I'm not only dead set on that script, that screenplay being my very first feature film, but I'm dead set on him being the lead role, playing the lead role. It's written specifically for him. No one else can play the role. It's only Johannes Bakunke. And I'm, again, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I hope I'm not pronouncing it wrong. Anyway. Uh, Feels good to say all of those things out loud, just to have them in the ether. <laughs> um, it's going to be probably a little difficult to pitch this film based on uh, reality alone. But if I'm basing it on my uh, vision and my intent and my beliefs and just based on the value of what I have on paper and what I have in my mind and what I believe will become reality, it's very easy for me to talk about this film and sell it to someone who is actually willing to put their heart into it and not expect, you know, a blockbuster. Because let's be real, this isn't some kind of... Uh,
flashy film. It's not a flashy film. I'm not saying it's not profitable. It might be because thought provoking films that are very quiet and slow can also have great success. I think I don't actually know, but I believe that surely, I mean, uh, I have really solid faith in this film and, uh, if I can get a producer or probably I would need more than one producer to make this come alive. Uh, if I could just, if we could just be, you know, people, just humans and not look, you know, we don't look down on each other. Like, oh, I'm the artist, you're the producer, or I'm the one with the money or the one with no money. Like, let's just not, you know, let's just be on the same level which is I'd like to be with everyone, not just people I could potentially work with, but uh, anyone. I mean, today I entered the uh, newspaper uh, kiosk and one of my favorite people, Roman, you know, a, a man who's over 50 years old. And I I have this peculiar connection with him as he, as if he, as if we were on the same level, basically. I mean, you know, he's much older than me. I don't know whether he went, I'm sure he has, maybe he's gone for greater suffering. I have no idea. We shouldn't assume such things. I mean, uh, either way, uh, yeah, we're on the same level. He doesn't look down on me because he's older. I don't look down on him for I don't know what reason I would have to do that. Um, we differ in, you know, some political ideologies and uh, maybe our lifestyles differ quite a bit as well. Uh, one thing I can relate to is him wanting to slow things down. I get that. He sometimes even gets a little maybe irritated with me when I'm in a rush and he's just like, you're not going to be rushed, and that's good. I respect that. Uh, I never rush him. I just politely let him know that I, I am in a rush because I need to get back home. I need to take care of something for my grandmother or for myself. And, you know, that's just the reality of life. And it's nothing to be offended by. And he isn't, and neither am I. It's just sometimes we have not even a clashing uh, difference, just a difference, but we get through it. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. I basically just wanted to say it would be nice to find producers and collaborators and people to work with me on this film that would, we could all just be on the same level, no ego, no nothing. Although to be quite honest, as soon as I said that, I thought of just how much I admire Johannes Bakunka. I am kind of, it's going to be hard for me not to kind of, it's strange, it's just one film, but he made such an impression on me. I have such high respect for him that it's going to be hard for me to just kind of not see him up here, you know? I have great respect for him, really, I do. I think that one film, just that one film, Force Majeure, and those few interviews I've seen with him, where he very subtly, very intelligently and thoughtfully opened his heart. I'm not sure he, he strikes me as a very humble person. So I'm not sure he even realizes the effect he can have on fellow artists, just purely through his honesty and humanity. Uh, <laughs> But he has, he, he's made a great effect on me and I'm thankful for that. Anyway, uh, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to live stream this. This live stream was actually scheduled for like an hour earlier, but I was just in such a mood to write the screenplay. So, but I did, I just started writing and this scheduled live stream was just waiting on me. And as soon as I, uh, finished writing i just checked uh, well first of all i changed the song because i had one of uh, two of the songs that i'm using in the film 
that I'm planning to use in the film. That's another thing. I have like four or five songs from popular artists, some of my favorite ones like Depeche Mode, Aha, and Erasure, uh, that I hope I can license for the film or someone can help me get the licensing or I don't know how that's going to work, but it has to because those songs just need to be in the film. They mean too much to me. They mean too much to the scenes and to the character and to the story ultimately. Uh, they, they are absolutely incredible, amazing songs by themselves, but I hope they can be used in the film as well. And I think in some way value will be added all around. Um, so that's pretty much it, I think. I think I said everything. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave this public actually for a while, just I'm not even going to unlist it. I just, I don't know, maybe people want to know what I'm working on when I'm not sleeping. <laughs> uh, I'm actually working on many other things when I'm not sleeping, but this has been my main passion project. This whole screenplay has just been not just a, my number one dream of mine, but also just, it's been a priority basically. I mean, I've been envisioning it every single day of my life, even when I wasn't writing it, even if I was working on a short film or on a different video or a, on an animation project or some other maybe short film screenplays because I write quite a few of those as well. This this particular feature film screenplay that I intend on being my very first feature film, my debut, this has been just sort of the main thing for me. And, uh, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. Okay. I'm happy. I'm really happy with it. It's a very specific idea. It's very personal. It's very reflective. And I think it's something that I, I'm glad. I'm really glad I didn't have success earlier on. I'm glad I had to struggle. I'm glad I'm still continuing to struggle. I'm glad. I'm actually thankful for that because if it wasn't for everything, this screenplay, this film wouldn't be what it is and what it will be. It, it, it all basically just led to this. And, uh, Besides this, when I sometimes reflect on how I used to be, even just a year ago, I'm glad I didn't make it because I wasn't ready at all. I'm probably still not ready, but at least, at least I've experienced some more life and uh, yeah, at least I'm smarter. I, I guess I can say that. Maybe, okay, maybe not smarter, but <laughs> I feel like I know more. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm smarter, but I feel like I know more and therefore I'm prepared for more. If that makes sense. <clears throat> oh God. I'm trying, I'm gonna try to keep this under 20 minutes so that if someone wants to actually go through this, they don't have to sit through an hour of me rambling. But I'm just trying to finalize my thoughts, see if there's anything else I want to say. Hey, oh. Oh God, that an eyelash, what is that in my eye? I don't know, I guess I should, uh, something I've been meaning to, uh, Actually, I'll, I'll leave those thoughts for another time. I don't want to burden anyone with too much information at once. Under 20 minutes, that's going to be all right, I think. 
and uh, I'm going to record a couple of things actually. Uh, I should sleep. I should sleep. I should actually. I have a chance right now because I've done enough uh, development on my screenplay that I'm actually. I can actually go to bed, feeling fulfilled. Because you know I have a whole day of doing things, and then right at the very end I get to do my own thing and. Uh, Do you know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase that. It's what I do for today is my thing as well. Because when I'm doing something for someone else out of love, it's my thing as well. I don't want to be selfish. Uh, and that's true. If I really like take time to think about it. Um, So I'm going to fold my bed, prepare stuff for recording, but I'm going to leave the live stream on for a couple more minutes. As I said, I'm going to try and keep it under 20 minutes. Can I fold my bed in another three minutes? I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. <clears throat> Funnily enough, this very tiny fold-out bed actually made it into the screenplay, and it plays quite a significant part, so I hope IKEA produces these in about a year's time as well, so that I can get the exact same one <laughs> for the film. Or I might just, you know, I might as well just transport this one, use this very same one stinky old bed that I actually use myself for years. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Keep it even more authentic, you know? This is actually probably the first time I've ever sat in this very chair here. It's interesting. Um, last time I sat on it was over there when I filmed my video for Colored Stockings, one of my very favorite films. Anyway, I said I was going to keep this under 20 minutes, and as usual, I'm 
not doing what I said I was going to do, but uh, I'll try to keep it under 24 minutes, up to 24 minutes, because 2024 is the year that I'm starting my career. Okay, that's that was my resolution for this year, and I'm keeping to that. I actually made that resolution way before the way before the new year. Uh, I made it back in back in September. I said, in a year's time, I'm gonna have a career, no matter how small it is. It's gonna start, okay? Like in the actual industry, in the actual area, I'm actually gonna start it late by by September of next year. So. I don't have that much time to go. And one of my kind viewers here says he started painting full time last year, which is great. Congratulations. That's wonderful. And I truly mean that. My, my mother actually wanted to start painting around two years ago, and she did. She did start. She actually went to a few classes as well. Me being me, of course, I said, oh, mom, you don't need classes to paint. You can just paint. But uh, I'm sure there's value in attending classes and seeing how people do things. And I think I actually remember her saying that the class was more annoying than useful because she wanted to do things her own way. So see, I was, I, you know, I'd probably take after her in that regard. <laughs> Go my own way. But yeah, that's great. Uh, I hope the painting, I hope it continues, you know, paying off and... Uh, even if it doesn't pay off, don't quit it, because I'm sure there's value if if you decided to do it full time and uh, it's your passion, then it's worth pursuing, I'm sure. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to hear. Uh, One thing I'm going to do, actually, because this is ridiculous, but I need one tiny piece for my brick film. I have this set right here, which I'm not going to show because I want it to be a surprise. I'm a ridiculous person because I have two brick films that are practically finished, but I started a third one because I'm insane. Uh, anyway. I need one piece that's in that set over there that I haven't opened. I think I bought it like three years ago and I haven't opened it. And I need one tiny piece. So I'm going to open the set and grab that one piece. By the way, I wanted to elaborate a, a little bit more since you were up the uh, painting topic. Because uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're into abstract stuff, seeing as uh, you have weirdness in your username. And also, I'm assuming since you're following my channel, I'm, I'm assuming you're a fan of David Lynch, so maybe that kind of art is up your alley. My mother actually did uh a dabble in some abstract art i would say she started she started off with it with a simple template of just some scenery and she just kind of followed those lines and made some colors there and here and kind of a landscape and then she just started like and i really love that i love the simplicity of the whole landscape color composition nice you know not too contrasty they kind of all merged it was a nice pleasant for the eyes and thankfully i took pictures i actually archived like step by step every time she made progress she went to the kitchen for a smoke for a cigarette and i would just run into her room snap a picture <laughs> because i'm insane like that i need to archive things that matter to me and uh, i'm so glad i did because she basically painted over the whole thing and what was just kind of basically disappeared over time because she just painted over and over and over and over it over and over again and i archived every single step i'm so glad i did otherwise i would have been lost to time 
David Lynch and how many Koreans paintings are huge influences. That's wonderful. Uh, I just remember those short films by Harmony Korean. Uh, I'm not sure if he did those paintings for the posters, but they were really good. The one for snowballs and another one. Uh, there's probably a mixture of photography and painting, but still really wonderful looking. <clears throat> anyway, this is <laughs> this is the set I need to open because the piece I need, and I just by luck because I was just looking at the set while writing for a moment. I, I had some, I had a little because usually when I'm writing my my scripts, I'm just straight from the heart, from the brain, just it just goes straight into the screenplay, and uh, there's essentially no stopping. But at one point I did stop. And I have, a, a, which is rare for me, I had a bit of trouble on dialogue. Um, not because I wanted it to sound natural, but because I wanted it to be true and authentic without being self-indulgent, which when it came to that particular scene was a bit hard to, to accomplish. But uh, anyway, here's under 24 minutes. I'm just going to stop saying, you know, hopefully I keep this live stream short. But anyway, um, this is the piece I need right here. Um, and let me just preface this by saying I have no interest in this particular series, but I am a fan of the original series. Maybe not a, maybe not a fan, maybe a fan is a bit too big of a word. But it the original series is nostalgic for me, and I enjoyed a lot of the episodes. And uh, one of them was traumatic for me, so that's interesting. Yeah, the OG one, that's what I'm saying. The... So basically, when I bought this, I was just thinking of the original. And the, the characters essentially look the same. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the only difference uh, on the actual minifigure is like this little hair going up. I think that's the actual only difference. So I'm just pretending this is the original series and not whatever the new one is, which doesn't interest me. I don't know, maybe someday when I have way too much time on my hands, which is not going to be the case probably. Anyway, I'm just gonna open this. And you know, I don't like this way of opening sets. Let me actually make sure my Let's make sure my uh, focus is good. This is so fidgety. OK. Uh, yeah, I don't like this way of opening sets because it kind of damages the box. But I'm such a nostalgic person, I'm such a sucker for nostalgia, that I just continue opening opening it, opening sets that way because I rarely get to open sets. But when I was a little kid opening these sets, I always used this method. So just for the feeling alone, I do it that way still. Yeah, my room is a mess. Apologies for that. Because lighting is uh, way too intense. Well, here we go. Actually, I'm going to play a little, uh, little tune to accompany this moment.
Okay. <clears throat> I love that theme song actually. So good. The original one, of course. Actually, I should mention that because I did mention one of the episodes gave me trauma when I was a little kid. Uh, it was the one with the uh, the kid that ate glue. Yeah, I was very like disturbed by that when I was a little kid. Oh, you actually heard it, yeah. I think that was the credit uh, theme, wasn't it? Yeah, it played during the credits and I really like it. Sounds good. Okay, so, wow, well, these pieces look nice. But I'm looking for a really plain piece. There it is, I see it. Okay. Fighting crime, trying to save the world. Here they come just in time. The power girls. See, it would, be, it would be such a guilty pleasure to just open this up and start building it. Look at this piece. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm one of those people that prefers the older designs, but this is, I don't know, there's something really pleasant about this. Just, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Um, I don't know why I keep avoiding using brand names. I guess I have some, uh, uh, what's the word? I don't want to, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know. Okay, so I got the one piece that I needed. I got the one piece. And that's all. That's all I needed. <laughs> so I, I, I got it. Oh, oh, oh. Blessing. Oh my god, do I remember the lyrics now? Did it only take one playthrough to remember the lyrics? I usually am not good at remembering lyrics, so that would be interesting. So yeah, and, and you know, I'm glad I opened it that way. The box wasn't even particularly done. No, it wasn't even damaged, to be honest. I mean, if you look at it from that way, it doesn't even look open. So that's nice. Go back to your original resting place. There you go. I'll, bid you, I'll, I'll build the set some other time, whenever I, uh, I don't know when that will be actually, you know, it's like, it's like a massive treat when I actually allow myself to build a set that I'm not using for a film. It's just pure indulgence and I kind of, you know, kind of want to have a stable life first and start the career and maybe once I have a house and my family is healthy and safe and secure, I can just give myself a night to build one of these sets and uh, follow that up by watching a, one of my favorite films. And, you know, that would just oh, that would be so pleasant. But you know what? Being here right now, 
writing my screenplay, talking about it, in a way developing my brick film by digging out this one piece. That's that's also very rewarding and pleasant. So how long have I been going for? 37 minutes. You know, that's okay. I might aid, I might end in a in a in a three three or so minutes I might finish. So if there's any questions whatsoever, I encourage them. And please ask away before I go. Uh, but either way, thank you for keeping me company and you know being here. It's nice. Uh, I guess I can show this because it's not really a spoiler. <laughs> I mean, you, it doesn't really indicate what the brick film is about whatsoever. It's just, you know, a very universal thing. A desk, lamp on a desk next to a computer and a mouse. Basically, the piece I had, and also some water right there. The piece I had before was this one. And when I looked over at the set, I thought, oh, this piece would actually be much better, this one, the one I just dug out, because um it looks more like a mouse this is way too tri triangular anyway so that's that have i watched anything lately yes i went to the cinema at the very beginning of the month to watch the zone of interest which i've been meaning to watch for however long it's been out for it's a film i've been looking forward to for the longest time because i'm a big 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 fan of jonathan glazer's under the skin I also remember Sexy Beast, but not as well, because I watched it a very long time ago. It's due for a rewatch soon enough. And uh, I'll probably go over 40 minutes now that you've asked, but that's OK. <laughs> I did encourage the question. Uh, 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 so first of all, I want to show you the, uh, the poster we have in Poland. The theatrical poster is probably the rare occasion of being better, in my opinion, than the one they're using everywhere else. I really like this version. Usually I prefer the US slash original posters for whatever uh, release, but um, this time around I prefer the Polish version. And now that I say that, it's probably more in tune with the old Polish posters that we used to get, the actual good ones. Uh, so yeah, the zone of interest was great. And I actually in, uh, appreciated the film so much. I think enjoyed is the wrong word for this particular film. But I appreciated the film so much. It gave me such a fulfilling experience that I, uh, shortly after, found a chance to rewatch Under the Skin. Might as well show up a couple of sets on the way because I'm actually going to dig out what I'm talking about. Yeah, these are just, you know, this is just indulgence, in, indulgent purchases that are going to be untouched for the next however many years, but whatever. Um, yeah, shortly after I rewatched Under the Skin and after so many years, I actually think I love it even more. I remember it being just great, but uh, it's even better than I remember. I appreciate what they did with the digital cinematography. Scarlett Johansson, or Johansson, or whatever. Um, apologies for the probably wrong pronunciation. Scarlett Johansson is great in this. Um, I really liked her in Asteroid City, but this is probably her best role, I think. Uh, on this particular rewatch, one of the scenes really touched my heart, and I basically wasn't expecting it, because I, I, I remember uh, the film off by heart, basically, because I've seen it quite a few times back when I was in, back when it came out, basically, I think, or shortly after. Um, I was in college back then, but uh, I really loved the film back then, and I've watched it a couple of times. And after that, it's just hasn't been watched for about 10 years. <laughs> so going back to this was great. My favorite segment of the film was the one 
with the with the calm Scottish man in his quiet home and being kind to her. I just that whole segment was great. And um, yeah, Scarlett Scarlett's performance in this was really special. One scene in particular really touched me, and I again I wasn't expecting it because it's been a while since I've seen the film and. Uh, I remember that scene even. I, I I remember that scene very well, but it just touched me differently this time around, which is great. You know, the films don't change, but we do, and therefore we notice more things and appreciate more. All right, so so zone of interest. I watched, and then uh, under the skin. And then nothing after that, up until just a couple of days ago, on the 8th, I went to see <laughs> Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. <laughs> and you know what? I actually enjoyed it. You know, I wish it was more like the original uh, two films, which I really like, the first two. Um, but... Uh, Sorry, actually, sorry. I, I watched Afterlife as well for the first time uh, before seeing this new one because I haven't seen Afterlife and I was like, okay, I should probably catch up because I'm sure this is a follow-up and that was a good assumption. I don't even look at the posters. I just go by intuition. So that was good intuition because otherwise I would have, you know, not have known anyone. Afterlife was a little disappointing for me. Um, and then Frozen Empire, I thought, was uh, better, although still I would prefer, like, the type of late 70s, early 80s, early 80s comedy that the original two exhibited. Although, still, I like the new comedy, too, but it's, it's much less a comedy and much more uh, an action film for kids. But it was nicely done, I think, you know. Innocent to know. Tyrannosaur. Oh, is that the one by, is that, is that the British film by uh, Patty Cons, is that his name? Patty Considine? I can't remember right now. One second. I said Patty. It's a Paddy, isn't it? Paddy Considine. Yeah, Paddy Considine. Not just a, an actor. Yeah, Tyrant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My memory, my memory is still up to par. So Tyrannosaur, I wanna. I've been meaning to watch that for a while. Haven't seen it yet. Two thousand and eleven was a great year for film. It seems. Um, so I'm going to watch that at some point. Maybe soon, actually. Thanks for the reminder. Anyway, I'm going to get going now. I think 45 minutes is fair. <laughs> it's a fair compromise between under 20 minutes, under 24 minutes, and then up to 40 minutes. It's OK. It's like I'm going to keep it under 50 now, for real, Four times the charm, or four, fourth times the charm. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for uh, keeping me company. Thank you for listening. For anyone who's watching this uh, afterwards, not live, but just in its archived state, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and for sticking by. Uh, yeah. I'm really grateful whenever I have like some peace of mind and I can actually work on my art. It's just, I feel so grateful for that because I live a very minimalistic life and I love that. So when I can kind of concentrate that minimalism even more and just have complete peace and quiet and be able to focus on what I love, it's just the greatest feeling. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm glad someone appreciates hearing from me and 
I'm glad you stopped by and kept me company. I do really appreciate it. Good luck on the paintings. Uh, I'm sure I will see them someday. And uh, I'll get to appreciate them fully. Not just a quick skin, but actually, you know, look at them and appreciate them. So good luck with those. I hope inspiration comes flowing because it's a great feeling. And uh, yeah, thank you. So that's that's all for tonight. I'm going to record some stuff, maybe write a little bit more because I feel like I have some more stuff in my heart that needs to be put on a page. And then I'll eventually I'll get to sleep and we'll see how things go. So thank you for everything. And uh, until next time, whether it will be a live stream or probably not, to be honest, Probably, hopefully, one of my projects actually gets finished. I'll actually finish one of my projects instead of almost finishing and then moving on to another one because the passion is so great. Um, until then, take care and later. <laughs> later. I don't, I don't want to end it on later. Um, take care and thank you and take care. <laughs>